Jared Poland from NoseFoto.com, and this is your... I admire your honesty. Hell, I like you. Photo News Fix. This fix is brought to you by Squarespace. As you know, I've been using Squarespace for JaredPoland.com for well over 10 years. 10 years! The reason I've been using Squarespace for my own portfolio for that long is it's just so damn simple to use. It's simply drag, drop, and go. No coding needed. In fact, it took me less than five minutes to put up this new gallery of my poison photos from last year. Now, it doesn't get any simpler than that. I guarantee you in a matter of 20 minutes or less, you can have a full-on photo website up to send people to and to help you get jobs. To get your 14-day free trial, head on over to squarespace.com slash photo. and if you decide that it's for you, use the code photo at checkout to get 10% off your first order. First up, did you know one of the largest, most influential photography YouTube channels in the entire universe celebrated its 13th anniversary on June 1st? 13! Oh. That's right, on June 1st, 2010, I officially launched fronosphoto.com and my YouTube channel was born. It's been a long journey to get to this point and it's insane to think that I started out making videos in my brother's bedroom with zero followers and 13 years later to see what we've built together with you, the community, is kind of insane. Thank you all for your support over the years and I hope you stick around to see what we do next. Next up, remember last year when the Raiders wide receiver Devontae Adams shoved this guy carrying a C-stand after a game? That photographer's name was Park Zelby, who was a freelance photographer and a college student working the game for ESPN at the time. After the game, Park was taken to the hospital where he was diagnosed with concussion syndromes. My life concussion. And Devontae Adams quickly apologized for shoving the photographer. Now here we are many months later and Park has filed a lawsuit claiming he was diagnosed with a concussion, fears for his life, and suffered harm after the incident went viral. Viral. He said, these are his words, I'm looking for justice. Justice! You can't shove someone down and walk off like it didn't happen. Not in real life. To be fair, Adams was charged with one count of misdemeanor assault in Kansas City and has an appearance scheduled for June 26th. He was not suspended by the NFL or his team at that time. Now, Park doesn't think that Adams has paid enough and hired a personal injury lawyer. Hi, I'm Saul Goodman. Who had this to say. Did you know that you have rights? He's looking for compensation. He feels he was bullied and he wants to stand up for himself. Zelby's attorney, Dan Curry, told USA Today Sports, bullied? I mean, yeah, he was physically pushed over and if he was injured, then, then yeah, I could see some sort of compensation coming his way. But there's some worrying signs from Park's lawyer, in my opinion, that makes this again, this is just my opinion, seem like a cash grab. You know, cause, cause it is, in my opinion. My neck and my back. Oh. For example, they are suing everyone from Adams to both teams in the game to the Jackson County Sports Complex and landmark event staffing who provided security for the game. I mean, why doesn't he just sue his mother while he's at it? What you say about my mama? Now here, listen to this from the like a shooter. I, I, I mean, I mean the lawyer. Everybody is hopeful, my client too, that things will get resolved one way or another. I'm on a the jury is the resolution of last resort. We welcome a trial, Curry said, but if we can get all parties happy prior to that, that's what we'll do. Right now, we're getting ready for a trial. Can you say money grab? Everybody now say money grab. Hashtag money grab down below. Gra grab it. Because with a statement like that, we hope to settle, but if we have to go to trial, we will. Oh, I, I like money. Most news sources didn't report how much he was seeking, but one said $25,000, which honestly I think might have been a typo and might have left off a zero, because $25,000 is nothing, especially if the lawyer is taking like 60%. Oh, and the fact that Devontae Adams is one of the highest paid football players in the game, $25,000 is pretty much nothing. Now I have more on this on the next Raw Talk, where I can be, well, a little more Raw, which comes out every Friday at Frono photo.com slash podcast or wherever you get your podcasts. Next up, we have two new compact and affordable lenses from both Nikon as well as Canon. First, let's start with the Canon. Canon has dropped, though don't actually drop this lens, a 28 millimeter f2.8 pancake. pancake. 
Now, pancake generally refers to a lens being tiny and compact, and this one is just that. Pancake, pancake. Weighing in at just 4.2 ounces or 120 grams and measuring only, is, it, is this right, one inch long, it's small. That's what she said. I mean, just look at the front element. It's, it's almost not even there. Though I'm not a fan of 28 millimeters per se, I am a fan of an affordable, fast, full frame, wide angle lens for only 299 bucks. This lens can also be used on the new APS-C RF camera and will give you the equivalent of a 45 millimeter lens if we were talking about 35 millimeters. Now, Nikon, not wanting to be left out of the mix, announced a crop sensor Z lens in the way of a 24 millimeter F1.7, which gives you a 36 millimeter equivalent focal length. According to Nikon, the lens is 1.5 inches and weighs in at 135 grams. Now, keep in mind, this lens is not for full frame bodies and will set you back $276. The good news about both of these new lenses, new photographers can experience what wider apertures give you without breaking the bank. So good on you, Nikon and Canon. And finally, last week, Adobe released a new feature in a beta version of Photoshop called Generative Fill, and it's, well, it's, it is actually mind blowing. In Adobe's example, they showed a bike rider on the road and he's not in a bike lane, by the way, and around him are a bunch of burnout and tire marks. They go ahead and highlight those tire marks, click the button that says generative fill and bam, they're gone. But that's not all. What about the yellow lines down the middle? Well, there, there are no lines. So they select an area, a box pops up, they type in their yellow road lines and guess what? The lines appear but it gets even more insane. They go on to extend the image and have generative AI fill in the rest and it's pretty seamless. Now, one example posted by the guys over at F-Stoppers showed a model being selected and sweaters being generated over her body. This beta is pure insanity and brings up oh so many ethical questions about photography that we'll discuss later on another Raw Talk. Now, do yourself a favor and search Generative Fill Photoshop Beta on YouTube after you watch this video to see what people are doing with it. And there you have it, Jared Polinfrono's photo.com. See ya.